the next question was, I just got my summer schedule and my son has two brand new therapists on his team. I don't want new people learning the ropes on my child's time. What can I do to get more seasoned therapists? Yeah, so this is a common concern that we hear um, as we continue to grow and onboard more therapists. They've got to start somewhere. Um, so the first step to take is attending your open enrollment and communicating with your leadership team at the office, with your supervisor, the operations manager, clinical manager. Um, we're all working together in Naperville right now to get schedules set for the fall schedule that we're switching to very soon. Um, so this is really important to us that we do hear the feedback from our families and any um, concerns that you have, but then working through that together and having having that balance on your team. It's good to have balance. It's good to have therapists that are a little greener and then have some other therapists that have been around a little more seasoned um, so that you can have um, a good mix of therapists on the team. But we do need to continue to grow therapists in the field and support them. So other things that you can ask for from your leadership team is, if I'm going to have these new therapists on my team, what is their um, support going to look like? How are you going to ensure that this is going to be the same quality of care as the other therapists that may have a few years of experience? And we can put together um, action plans for you so that you know what to expect in that training process because they're probably already in place and you just aren't aware of them. Yeah. So definitely communication is key here. Yeah, and I so appreciate you saying that. You know, I was this parent. I remember in the beginning and I was like, well, I don't want the new therapist. I don't want for them to be learning the ropes on my kid. And when they would say things to me like, well, you know, they all have to start somewhere, I would think, yeah, but not with my kid. Uh, right? Because we want what's best for our children. And usually best means I'll take the expert. Like if I have a choice between the new person who's going to do surgery on me and the expert, I would of course want the expert, right? It's just that it, that equation doesn't work in ABA. And what got explained to me, and I try to explain to parents all the time, is that you're trying to prepare your child for the world. And in preparing your child for the world, they're not going to just run into really exceptionally trained ABA therapists. And, you know, when, when you're getting your child ready for the world, you want them to be working with someone who's highly trained. And all card therapists are highly trained, right? They've had much more training than most of the people your child run into when they're at school. And I love the fact one therapist said to me, you know, we're trying to get your son ready for the day that he goes to fifth grade and he's in science class and the teacher has called in sick and they sent a substitute. And on that day, that substitute teacher is not gonna know your son, he's not gonna know autism, he's not gonna know ABA, and we want your son to be successful on that day. So having only really experienced therapists is not doing your kid a favor. Um, you need to have a bunch of different therapists doing things in a bunch of different ways, yes, I hope that somewhere on your team you have a really experienced person, but you better hope that you have some newbies on the team because otherwise your kid isn't getting the maximum, I feel, towards generalization. And I start, you, you didn't hear at the beginning of the show, Elizabeth, I said, I'm not an expert in autism, but I have an informed opinion. <laughs> and that I'm very, I'm always very happy to share my informed opinion. But this is one of those things that I'm always so fearful about because if parents don't know this, then they will keep asking for the most experienced therapist, not knowing that they're literally asking for something that would shortchange their child's progress. So I'm adamant about making sure that parents know, but uh, I love that you're also offering them an action plan and showing them, look, this is how we are getting these people ready and trained to be with your child so that they can put their minds at ease, that they are highly trained um, but you don't want only the most seasoned therapists on your team. That's a that's yeah, not and, the choice. And it's important to me that the families are comfortable. So with that action plan, just we're doing overlaps with our therapists on a very regular basis and providing them with feedback and support and program updates. Um, so the families don't always 
know what goes into that. So kind of reviewing that with the families can help put them at ease a little more to, to know that on the back end we have maybe the supervisor, assistant supervisor, clinical manager, therapist liaison. There are so many supports in place there that their child is going to um, really be successful. Yes, I love that. Thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.